Hello there! Today we are going to be doing this animation in Adobe After Effects. Please follow me on this because it is going to be very, very, like, very easy. Let's go for it. Still there? Come on! Kinetic type series. So, first of all, we are going to do the tutorial, and after that, I'm going to show you the actual project, After Effects project, that was used to create this post here. And yeah, let's let's start doing it. Okay. So the first thing that we need is here in Effects and Presets. If you don't have that visible, you go here to Window, Effects and Presets. And we are going to look to a mesh warp effect. We are going to apply it with layer. And we are going to set it to, for example, one in rows. We don't need rows. And if you see that it disappears, you need to select it again. Okay. So this effect is a little bit tricky, but don't don't you worry because I'm going to be with you. So and then in columns, I think we are going to simplify it a little bit, like let's say four columns. It, are going to be enough so you need to select the effect to actually be able to access to it okay so also I'm going to tell you that I need to tell you that this is this effect is a little bit difficult for your computer because it's dealing with the image in a very complicated way so maybe it slow down your computer so if that happens you set it to half and also we are going to be working in a lower quality here and after we are happy with the animation, we are going to crank this up to 10, okay? So let's put it at 5, for example. And if I go with the playhead to the beginning of my, of my timeline, the first thing that I need to do is click here in the distortion mess stopwatch to generate my first keyframe. So let's do it like that. And I'm going to go to frame 20, for example, and here it comes the tricky the tricky part of this effect okay so you need to select this intersection for example this is a, a control point and this one here if you hold on shift while clicking we have the two selected okay so I'm going to zoom out with the mouse wheel okay so you see that they are deselected now so I'm going to select them again shift and select this one it's a little bit tricky okay but be patient because the result really worth the effort so now i zoomed out because i'm going to play with the arrows okay left and right ar arrows but i'm going to hold on shift and i'm going to click on the left arrow now and you see as i'm so zoomed out the steps are very 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 big so to say so let's come here so we have our first part of the animation ready let's go to this moment in the in the timeline and I'm going to select this and this one here and again I'm going to zoom out and while holding on shift I'm going to click the right arrow okay like this and be careful because if you passed a specific point it starts doing weird stuff okay so don't go too far because this effect effect is a little bit i mean yeah it's it's a special effect <laughs> let's let's put it that way so now i go to this moment here and i'm going to select this one and while holding on shift that one there and i'm going to move to the right also i'm holding on shift so that the steps the steps are bigger just because I'm a little bit lazy and now if you hit U okay while selecting the layer you access to the keyframes and I'm going to select the first one and I go to the last moment of my timeline and I'm going to paste it there so now if you hit your spacebar to play your animation let's see how it feels so it feels cool but, and this is a bit bad, uh, it's a little bit robotic and that's 
because these are linear keyframes. So I'm going to select all of them by clicking and dragging and I'm going to hit F9 or if you prefer you can click here on the graph editor, click on the animated property here and with this button you can easy ease them so that's going to feel better but if we play a little bit with the Bezier handles it's going to be even better so let's check it out and yeah it feels very very nice so I think now is the moment to remember crank up the quality to the best quality because it's the same price <laughs> and it's and we just want you know like best quality here okay so now comes the tricky or the fun part that some of you are scratching your heads how how he did that and it's so easy so you come here again to window effects and presets and now we are going to be searching for something called the polar coordinates what a cool name okay so this effect we apply to the layer in interpolation it needs to be set to 100 and don't freak out we are going to fix this and in type of conversion it needs to be set to direct to polar okay and that's it you know you see how easy it was that's really really amazing and it's going to be very slow at the beginning because it's kind of hard for your computer to uh, to calculate everything but you can help your computer just by putting it at half for example the resolution or even less because you know that whenever you render it out this is going to be always at full so for working purposes this is a good option so now it comes an extra or bonus tip so if you go here to uh, the regular parameters of your layer and you want to rotate it it's going to be doing crazy stuff so you have two options or you pre-compose your layer like this or you can apply another effect so the effect that we are aiming for is the transform effect and this one is a lifesaver I must say like it helps a lot so now if we play with the rotation of the effect we can just turn this little fella around so another thing that you can play with is maybe you are wondering how you expand the circle or you change you know like the look of it so it's just a matter of moving you know your layer up up sorry and down so it extends from the center of the effect so that's the way <laughs> you do this and then another extra tip or bonus tip is like if you duplicate this layer okay and you move the other one you can kind of create this super cool effect of concentric you know texts even for example let's say that i'm very adventurous here and i'm going to put this one to minus you know the x axis I'm going to change it so then I can for example click U and start like messing around with the keyframes so that they are not doing the same things at the same time so that's it it's very easy very cool effect so now I'm going to go to um, the actual after effects project that I used to create the post and it is this one okay so the thing here is I was playing uh, with a text that was converted into a shape layer and if I click U here you see that it's just a matter of animating the letters from a path point okay so they were converted to vectors and then I can play in a more extreme way because I, I liked this this behavior of the P working like if you remember like the Pirelli logo type something like that and then it was as easy as repeating that and yeah I played with this a lot but I think 
what works very well here is that for example the E as it has so long lines it creates this kind of rhythm here that is great so it's not only the effect you know it's what you make or what you create out of that effect so let's go out there and play with this and please if you can tag me I'm going to love watching the results that you, you create so just go for it and have some real fun <laughs> Connecticut Series.